I'm out in the woods for some autumnal landscape photography today and I have to say the conditions are looking quite promising. It's very still, the light is very flat across the woodland at the moment and the colours in the trees are looking absolutely sublime. I think they may be at their peak at the moment. So I'm quietly confident I should be able to get some shots in the bag. So let's see what I can find. So I think I found my first shot for the day and it's just behind me here. You may be able to see my camera just set up just there, very low to the ground on its tripod at the moment. And I think it's quite a nice composition overall. It's not perfect. And frankly, with woodland photography, it's difficult to get perfect because there's so much chaos in and amongst the woodland environment that it's very difficult to get things perfectly to align in every aspect of a shot. But I think by and large, this looks like quite a nice image. So what really caught my eye here is this tree here. You can see this sort of diagonal half fallen tree that kind of runs across the composition there. Instantly my eye sort of gravitated to that within this forest environment here. And what I'm trying to do in the composition is position that diagonal tree sort of intersecting with the top right of the actual scene kind of sitting in the backdrop. And I think that works quite nicely. And then in the foreground, we've got this tree trunk here that's covered in moss and it's got a few little ferns kind of uh, growing at the base of it. And also a really nice carpet of autumnal leaves around the base as well. And that's kind of forming the kind of foreground of my shot. And that is sitting in the bottom left of the scene. So there's a real good sort of diagonal dynamic throughout the actual composition. And then you've got this fallen tree here on the ground that runs horizontally across the front of the scene as well. And then generally, I think there's a nice sort of dynamic going on in the background as well. So this forest here sits on the side of a hillside and you can see there's like a ravine that sort of runs down sort of that way. So there's a real good sense of space in the backdrop here. It isn't too cluttered. Um, and it, it feels like there's a real sense of depth running through it. So right in front of my camera here, the base of the tree is maybe a meter or so from the camera. So it's very, very close. But then right off in the distance, those trees right back there are probably a couple of hundred meters back. And I'm capturing all of that within one composition. Settings wise, this is actually quite a difficult shot to get right for three reasons. The first is the huge depth of field through the scene. The second is the general low light of this environment. And the third is wind movement in the foliage of the scene, particularly in the foreground ferns down here. So I'm having to take into account all of those aspects when choosing my settings here. So the first thing to make clear is I've got a circular polarizer on here um, and that is helping to punch out the autumnal colors in the scene and just make it a lot more vibrant by taking reflections off any of the vegetation. It works really, really well this time of year, but it does cut out about a stop and a half of light, <laughs> which kind of amplifies the low light issue that I'm currently experiencing. So settings wise, I've chosen a shutter speed of about one second it's not perfect. I'm having to time my exposures with drops in the wind to make sure that I get nice sharpness in those foreground ferns. If I was to run it any longer than one second, the chances of me getting that sharpness in that vegetation would be pretty much non-existent. So I'm shooting with one second. I'm shooting um, with an aperture of f16, which is a bit narrower than I would usually choose, but the depth of field here is significant. Those foreground ferns and the tree are very, very close to the front of my lens, whereas the trees right at the back are out at infinity. Um, so trying to get all of that sharp within one exposure is going to be difficult, even at f16. And because focus stacking in woodland environments is not ideal generally because of the movement that you get, in vegetation and the branches and the trees etc. So in my experience when you focus stacking in a woodland environment it's better to have a smaller number of exposures in that stack than a bigger number. 
i.e. if you can get away of two or three images in your stack, that is better than seven or eight because it's going to make the blend so much easier. So by shooting at that narrow aperture of f16, hopefully that will allow me to capture the full depth of field here. The first image is going to be focused down on the tree in the foreground. The second image will be down in the midground about there. And then the final image will be out at infinity at those background trees there. And blending that together in post-production should give me the nice sharpness that I'm looking for through this scene. Um, I'm shooting this at about 35 mil and I've had to raise the ISO to uh, 400, which is higher than I would usually like to shoot at. But given the other dynamics that I'm trying to control, it's a compromise I'm willing to make. my second composition for the day just behind me here and this is one of those shots where I know there's something there but I'm just really struggling to unlock it and I've nearly walked away from this shot three or four times already but I've been absolutely determined to make it right because I'm convinced there's something there but I'm not 100% sure whether I found it so I don't know if you can see this beautiful little tree here with its vibrant yellows really punches out from the scene very very strongly amongst all of the bracken and the ferns the greens that carpet this bit of the forest floor and then if I just move you this way out towards the right of the scene there's a massive contrast here so on this side you've got very deep autumnal colors and on this side you've got these gray kind of sparse tree trunks that just kind of go off in a line off into the distance kind of acting like a bit of a leading line into the image and then right at the end of the row of that trees you've got a unusual shaped tree in comparison to the others so it provides a bit of a kind of focal point into the image and I think it hangs together quite nicely but I don't know I'll let you be the judge I'm not 100% convinced but there's definitely something there settings wise I'm shooting this f4 focusing in to the trees on the right hand side here to give me a very shallow depth of field to uh, add a bit of bokeh to these yellow kind of leaves out on the left of the scene um, shooting at ISO 64 70 mil and a shutter speed of about 15th of a second with a circular polarizer on the front found another gorgeous little scene just behind me here and the star of the show is this beautiful dainty little tree that's got the most vibrant yellow fiery leaves very very eye-catching and it seems to be growing out of kind of like an upturned buttress of roots so I'll just walk you back to where my camera is because I'm probably set up about 10 meters away from where the actual tree is itself and what works so well here is you can see the tree off just there it sits in solitude and there's not very many other vibrant colors around it at all the backdrop is actually 
quite muted, dominated by the greys of sort of tree trunks and the pine forest there and the browns of the, the carpet of dead bracken across the actual forest floor. Um, so that means that the yellows in the, the tree there really, really punch through incredibly vibrantly. There are a few challenges to this though. On this side of the scene, we've got some other vibrant colors sort of vying for attention. So it's important to exclude those from the composition. Otherwise, there's gonna be a bit of a conflict about where the viewer's eye is to settle. So I'm shooting this as a perfect square crop to exclude that part of the image. And I'm gonna place the actual tree bang center in the middle. Also, I've got to be very, very careful not to get too much of the highlights peeking through the top of the forest here, because again, that will distract from the star of the show, which is the tree. Settings wise here, I am focusing in for the tree at F4 to give a very shallow depth of field. That will render the tree itself in focus, but everything else should be quite soft in the scene. Also, I'm shooting at ISO 64, 70 mil at about tenth of a second I believe with a circular polarizer on the front to help punch out those colors. Overall a beautiful little composition I think. started to rain so it's as good a time as any to call it a day. Pretty productive day overall and I'm fairly satisfied with the images that I did manage to capture. If you've got any feedback for me on any of those images feel free to pop them down below in the comments as always and thanks very much for watching today. I'll see you all soon.